I'm getting to the point where I've started making some commitments and I've started uh, doing some actual measurements. Uh, you know, you can, you can sometimes cut too much, so I'm trying to be very careful about that. I'm looking for a 36 inch tall bench top, which is going to put the top kind of right about here, maybe 35, 36, or right, right about here where the tape ends. I need to do some measurements. So remember, I made this little drawing um, before uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, sizing of the bench. Now I have to do the same measurements for the height. What I have to account for is the bench top thickness, which is still an unknown. I have a bearer under that bench top, which is one of my pieces here. And then I have the rest of the legs. So I have to deduct the height the, the thickness of the bench top and the thickness of the bearer to get the height of the legs that I want. So like I said, I want 36 inches and I'm going to aim for about 36 and a half. That way, if it is too tall, I can always cut it off. This top should be three and a half inches if I uh, hadn't uh, planed it down. But since I've planed it down right now, I'm measuring about three and a little over three and a quarter. So what I think I'm going to do is just assume that my bench is three inches thick. Uh, if it ends up thicker than three inches, which it will after I'm done planing the top, then I'll end up with a taller bench. And I can always tr uh, trim the legs down a little bit later. So I'm going to assume that the bench is three inches tall. And the bearer is uh, under an inch. I need to get the right bearer here. So this is inch and a quarter. So three inches, inch and a quarter, subtract that from 36 and a half. And that is going to be the final dimensions of my uh, legs. So the next time I come here, I'll be working on that. Now these were rough cut. Uh, I bought these at a lumber uh, yard and um, I couldn't fit. Th these were uh, eight foot long and I couldn't fit them in my car so I cut them in the parking lot but to bring them home. So these are rough cut so I need to have a finish cut so the ends are fairly square to the sides. All four sides for all four legs. So all the legs are uh, parallel to opposite ends, perpendicular to adjoining ends. They're, the sides are pretty much perfect, as perfect as I can get it. This piece is 36 inches. My finished uh, Length is 32 and a quarter. So do I just mark a line here, 32 and a quarter, and go? I don't think so, uh, because I, like I said, I need both ends to be square. So I'm going to take maybe an inch over here, uh, cut that off as square as possible, and then measure my final length from that end. So let's do that. I'm just going to select a random edge right here light pass, another light pass, keep the square round, don't let it move. I'm going to come in and mark that corner. I registered the, the flat edge of my uh, square to the edge that was marked as an edge here. So I'm going to keep my reference faces the same, which means when I flip of this side, I'm going to turn my square this way. This now I'm registering against the face of the piece. I go here, I find the hole. Let's see if you can hear it. Hear that click? That click. That makes sure I stay on the knife. I don't try to deepen the cut because as if I deepen it, it, it is like a wedge and it spreads that knife line out. So it's way more accurate than a pencil, like you can already tell. So square registered against my face. I'm going to mark on the side. I'm going to tilt it over, keep the score register against the edge. That was my previous registration. I'm going to find the knife neck here, right there. I'm 
light passes at first and then as heavy as you can go. Now that I've flipped over to the side, you see my face is now on this side. I'm going to flip the square over this way. Find the knife edge here. Put the square up against it. Register the square. Tighten it. Make sure it doesn't move when I use it. And if I had planned all my surfaces right, these two would meet perfectly at the corner. And I'm going to show you what I got here. There's a perfect meet at the corner right here uh, where the two sides met, which meant which means that my sides were pretty well planed. Why do I do this knife wall? Because this is a cross cut. I'm about to do a cross cut uh, sewing against this uh, side. Uh, so I don't want any breakout. What do I do next? I'm going to clamp this down. Take my hammer, I'm going to deepen the knife cut with my chisel. Once that is done, you just flick this off. And what this gives me is a nice little trough for my saw to sit. I don't need the clamp for sawing at this time. I'm just checking back and forth to make sure that I don't deviate into the line and if I start approaching towards the line I have to stop and turn around and start the other way. I don't want to cross over the line. It's almost like water coloring. Uh, you, you, you make layout lines, you try to stay within the lines, you try to get as close as you can to the line and that makes for good joinery. Using it, here's a disadvantage of using uh, a pull saw is the sawdust comes to the side that you'd be seeing uh, right here. I'm following the line on both sides and I'm happy so far. I'm dropping the saw slowly so I can get the curve fully on this side and then I'm going to try to transfer the curve to that side and kind of go all the way around. That is another step in making sure that I do not have breakout. Going for accuracy here. just smells like pine, smells beautiful right now. The saw just picks up, it just generate heat, generates heat, the sawdust just gives up the sap, the, the pine fragrance, it's just lovely. Not 
quite staying parallel to the line here, but... I know I'm getting really close to finishing the cut because the pitch is changing. There. So let me show you what this side looks like. Looks pretty clean. It is fairly square. I, you see I missed a bit right here where my saw curve was over here but I kind of went deviated against the line. There's a step here that I'm just going to phase in. That should be pretty good. And there you go. It's pretty well cleaned up. So the way I chamfer is if I go this way, this edge is going to break out. So instead of going 40, parallel 45 degrees and I can't it, and I get no breakout. This is the same way you do roundovers. There. 
So this end is prepared. I'm going to do the same thing to one of the ends of all the other three legs. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to measure 32 and a quarter from this chamfered end, mark a line on this side and cut that to length and all four legs will be the same length and that is going to be my final dimensions. Once that is done, I will be ready for joinery. So I, I was really hoping to get some joinery done this week. Uh, at least start chopping one mortise, but I couldn't do it. I'm traveling next week, so I don't think I can do that either. Um, so this is just a slow progress, but we will get there. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to be traveling for work this week, so uh, I may not get a chance to do much, much woodworking, but I'm going to try. So if you're a hobbyist like me, let me know in the comments how you find time in your schedule to do woodworking. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I am a beginner woodworker and I've been vlogging about my uh, projects. Uh, these days I'm building a workbench. Uh, you can check that out over here. I also upload some short videos that I uh, send out on Thursdays, so you can uh, check that out over here. They're related to woodworking topics like book reviews, uh, tools, whatnot. Um, you should hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the videos. And uh, I will see you next time.